Sorry, you are my best friend. All the others left. Sahin stood by my side and lavished me with gifts. Science kept me warm inside when it was cold outside. Science was my only fan when all the others died. Welcome! You seem to have caught me in the middle of writing a song to my good friend, Science. But that's not why you're here today. You're here today to learn about science. So let's do that. Today we're going to be experimenting with Experiment 2.2. It's a pretty interesting one, and it demonstrates how ionic compounds can conduct electricity in water. To get started, you're going to need some supplies. First, you're going to need distilled water. This might look like just normal water, but believe me, it's distilled, and that's pretty important to the experiment. The next thing you're going to need is a little bit of baking soda. Now, you can probably find this in your mom's cabinet if you don't already have it. And I've already measured out half a teaspoon onto this watch glass because that's how much we're going to be using today. The next thing you're going to need is some sugar. Now, I actually don't have sugar with me today, but that doesn't mean that it stops you from doing it. So get sugar and use it for this experiment. The next thing you're going to need is two pieces of wire. Now, the textbook says preferably insulated, and that's ideal, so you don't shock yourself in the process. These, you can see I have a black and a white one. That way I can tell them apart. The next thing you're gonna need is some scissors or some wire cutters. Today I'm using wire cutters to strip the insulation from my wires. Next, you're gonna need a teaspoon. This is to measure your baking soda that I already did. Time conservation. Next, you're gonna need a 100 milliliter beaker or small glass. Today I'll be using a 100 milliliter beaker. Next, you're gonna need a nine or six volt battery. That's what this looks like. This is a six volt. Be careful that you don't use a, 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 a battery that you plug into an electrical outlet because it clearly says in your textbook that it will uh, easily kill you. And believe me, I have experience in that area. Next, you're gonna need safety goggles. And that goes without saying, and I would prefer you to have two because I care about you and not only your eyes, but your forehead and hair as well. The first thing you're gonna do is take your 100 milliliter beaker and you're gonna wash it out with some distilled water. That way you get rid of any residue from dish soap or anything else that might have previously been in it. Next, you're gonna take this 100 milliliter beaker and you're gonna take your distilled water and you're going to add 80 milliliters. So fill it on up to that 80 line. All right, and now I do wanna mention really, really quickly that this is a qualitative measurement. Qualitative. Now, I do want to mention really quickly that this is a qualitative measurement. That means it needs to be exact. Remember, we talked about that last week. After you have your water, you're going to take your two wires, and if they aren't already stripped, you're going to take your wire strippers and simply strip some of the insulation off. You're going to want about two centimeters of bare wire on both ends. Okay, perfect. Now you're going to take your wires and you're going to take your nine volt battery and you're going to kind of wad your wires up into sort of a spirally thing. And next you're just going to shove it down in there. Now it's important that you are touching the battery outlet with your wire. Once you're touching, you're going to want to bend this a little bit just to make sure it's touching. And there we go. You're going to get a piece of black electrical tape and just tape it on there real tight. That way you know that it's going to stay touching the outlet because let me tell you a secret. If it's not touching, your experiment will not work. That's why you want to make sure it's touching. This might take a little bit of time to get it right, but just be patient. You'll get it. All right, that looks good. And we're going to take our other wire, give that a little bendy bend as well, and we're going to connect that to the other one. Take another piece of black electrical tape, 
and just secure it tightly on to the battery outlet. Now that you've connected both ends of your wire to the 9 volt battery, what you're going to do is give your wires a little bend right about here and now take your beaker of distilled water and you're going to place the wires directly into there. Make sure that you're still connected to the battery over here and touching the battery outlet. Okay, now that you've connected your wires to the battery with tape and you've put them into the distilled water, all we have to do is sit back and observe. Which might be kind of boring because as you can see while you're observing, nothing's happening. So we're going to try something else. Remember I talked about that baking soda we had? You're going to take that half teaspoon of baking soda, simply remove your wires from the water, and just add it in. Now, it might get a little cloudy at first, but don't worry. Give it a stir, the baking soda will settle, and your glass will be clear again. Give it a quick stir. Set that aside. Now we're going to put our wires back in. And you're going to observe. And if you notice, your wires are bubbling at the ends. That's very exciting. And you'll learn later in physics that when electricity is conducted, particles called electrons, they, they move. They move from one end of this battery to the other. And this motion, it contains a lot of kinetic energy. The way we have this experiment set up, these electrons must travel through the wire, through the water, and through the other wire to reach the battery again. Under the conditions of this experiment, this kinetic energy is generated by the electricity in the molecules. And this, this electricity is enough to actually decompose this water into individual hydrogen and oxygen molecules, which is why you see the bubbles forming at the end of your wires. Now you might be wondering why nothing happened when there was no baking soda. That's because distilled water is not ionic. And when you added the baking soda, which is an ionic compound, suddenly you were able to conduct electricity. Now I want you to repeat this experiment with table sugar. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now that nothing will happen. No bubbles will be made, and that's because sugar is a covalent compound, not an ionic. And if you read your module, you know that ionic compounds are the only ones that conduct electricity. This proves that your science book is teaching you the correct and accurate information and you're able to have a little bit of fun along the way. Clean up your mess safely and don't get shocked by the battery. I'll see you guys next time. And until then, stay safe, love science,